A lot of people don't seem to understand how we can have so many empty jobs and yet so many people unemployed. There are several reasons for this. Firstly, a lot of those jobs will not pay enough to live on. And there will be various reasons for this. A lot of them will be minimum wage and minimum wage on full time hours is not enough to live on. A lot of these jobs will be part time, uh, which obviously doesn't give you enough hours. And the reason many of these jobs will be part time is to circumnavigate the system. So if you give someone part-time hours under a certain amount, it means you don't have to pay them, uh, I think it's national insurance, uh, statutory holidays, statutory sick pay. So they get no benefits with those jobs at all. So who would want that, especially on a minimum wage? You've also got a lot of jobs which are not flexible. So a lot of those people who are unemployed have other responsibilities. They might be carer for someone who is sick or elderly. They might have children at home. They might have their own health issues. And a lot of jobs are not flexible to that. You will also have a certain number of jobs which are highly skilled, require certain amounts of um, education. And I saw someone say, well, you know, it's not difficult to go and get educated. We have an education system. The number of people that fall through the education system is staggering in 2024. You would be amazed how many people leave school with no education. And I suppose there are quite a lot of people out there that cannot imagine the concept of doing a job that doesn't pay enough to pay your basic lives and I don't mean people who are because there, there are people who say oh all these unemployed people look at them with their iPhones and their, their cigarettes and their vapes not everyone's like that and the way the price of everything has gone up means that just being able to pay your rent and put food on the table especially if you have children children are very expensive to keep you know, they, they, they have this habit of growing, so their clothes constantly need replacing. They need to eat food, funnily enough. And growing children eat huge amounts of food because they burn a lot of energy because they're growing up. So this idea that, well, if you have a full-time job, you should be able to pay for everything, isn't correct. Say you get a minimum wage job. Minimum wage is currently... £11.44. Let's say that you do a 35 hour week and you do that 35 hour week every week of the year. That's 52 weeks of the year. That's going to pay you just under £21,000. You will be taxed and, nas and have national insurance on that. And depending on where you work, you may have to pay quite a lot to get to that job. Let's say that where you live is a thousand pounds a month for rent, which is actually quite cheap in a lot of places in this country now. That means your rent alone is going to be twelve thousand, which is going to leave you about six thousand pounds for the entire year for the rest of your life. That means food travel, if you have kids. So how is a minimum wage enough to live on? Lots of people are on minimum wage jobs 
because not everyone has an education. Not everyone is a lawyer or a doctor. I mean, my sister-in-law is an A&E nurse. They're paid pitifully. They even get charged to park in, in the NHS car parks to go to work, let alone getting to work. The system is not designed to encourage work because we have these ridiculous minimum wages that aren't sufficient for basic life when costs are so high. So why would you take a minimum wage job 34 hour, 35 hours a week every single week of the year with no holidays and you can't even pay for the basics of life? You just wouldn't bother, would you? I realised that I missed out a really important point when I was recording this and I kind of recorded it off the top of my head and then found some of the information to add to it which you've now seen and as I was doing that and looking for that information and finding articles and statistics and all that stuff I realised that probably one of the most important factors that I think is stopping people from taking jobs is something that happened once the pandemic began and it was that companies really showed themselves for who they were they demonstrated or have continued to demonstrate over the last four years a complete lack of interest in their employees. They showed that all they were really interested in was profit margins and CEO pay packets and that laying off staff, they can do that, we'll just get rid of you lot and then if we need you back we'll find someone who'll do the job for less. And they forced the people who did stay into working from home, because obviously we had to do that for a while. And people had settled into a new way of working that was better for their quality of life in many cases. And now they are demanding that people return because it now fits their agenda. There's not an awful lot of consideration for employee well-being. Uh, physical and mental health and it's still very much uh, the em employer gets to screw over the employee constantly and people are just fed up with it they've realized that actually see a lot of them have a lot of people have been surviving on less they have realized they can survive without those big regular pay packets or whatever pay packets they were on and they've realised that they don't have to live their lives at the beck and call of employers. That they can switch off at five o'clock. That they don't have to be constantly answering emails and getting calls from the boss at eight o'clock at night. And being asked to work at the weekend when they shouldn't be. And people have just had enough. They've absolutely had enough and I don't blame them. And I think that the lockdowns and everything that's come since then has empowered employees to be able to make different decisions about their lives and employers are not bending to fit that because as far as they're concerned they are right they come first and employees should just do what they're told and a lot of people have no interest in doing that so there's this big kind of wall in the middle where you've got the employees on one side who would do the jobs if they weren't being treated so badly if they knew that they weren't being taken the mickey out of if there was some kind of company loyalty on the other side you've got businesses who just want to treat people 
their workers like numbers and if we need you we'll hire you if we don't need you we'll just get rid of you it doesn't matter you know we don't care how that affects your life and people have just had enough of it and I don't blame them and I think that has a lot to do with with it um, there are so many different factors that I've covered some of them in this post but there are so many other things um, and I do believe that so certainly from what I've read that a lot of a lot of these posts don't actually exist that big companies particularly keep vacancies constantly on a roll even if the vacancies don't exist because you never know when a vacancy comes up and it's always nice to have the right CVs already on hand so you don't have to bother with advertising. So they keep advertising the jobs and lots of people will apply and then those people won't hear back and they'll assume they just haven't been shortlisted. But nobody was shortlisted because the job didn't exist. And this is a fairly common knowledge with big companies who have high turnover of staff or just have multiple vacancies. They might have big vacancies. Uh, there might not be any vacancies at the moment, but there might be some in a couple of months. So they just constantly rotate the vacancy adverts so that they can cherry pick when it suits them. And I think this is a lot of the reason why people who apply for jobs are constantly applying for dozens and dozens and dozens of jobs and don't hear is because maybe they're applying for something that doesn't actually exist. It's just such a mess. And it's really hard to find information. There were certain things where I wanted to include some information on that I couldn't find because it just makes some of the information really hard to find because they don't want you to know about it. Like how many of those job vacancies are minimum wage jobs? Do they even know? Uh, I did manage to find the chart which showed the highest number of vacancies in certain categories and those categories were jobs with poor pay, they were jobs with um, poor morale where people would it was stressful jobs, the kind of jobs that people don't want on sociable hours. And that's the reason, I guess, those vacancy numbers are so high in those industries, social and healthcare and hospitality, is because they're NAF jobs. And if you're paying NAF money for NAF jobs, people just won't take it. If you're going to give someone a NAF job, at least compensate them properly for the lack of enjoyment that they get, for the lack of work, lack of work satisfaction. Um, if you're doing a job you love, let's say you're getting less money for it, it's enough, but you really love what you do. So maybe that is part of a compensation. But if you're doing a really naff job that drains the living soul out of you, the very least you can get is enough to live on. And that's why we have this idea of minimum wage, minimum effort. If you are offering a job at minimum wage, that must mean you have very low expectations of what the staff will do. Because if you wanted them to do better, you would compensate them better, wouldn't you? Surely. So that's got a lot to do with it. That's where I wanted to end this. Um, I'm sure there will be many, many comments on this. Um, I don't make these for clicks and likes. I do these posts because these are things I think about quite a lot. And when you see a headline that says, oh, 1.9 million vacancies, oh, there's 100 billion people not taking any of these jobs, all these lazy people not taking any of the jobs that are on offer, I want to dig into it and I want to understand why. Why are people who clearly need work because the cost of living is high, not taking these jobs. And here are some of the reasons. And for those of you that are interested in actually finding out rather than just throwing out your angry comments for whatever reason, um, I hope you find this interesting. I've enjoyed making it. I've learnt a few new things along the way and that's what it's all about for me is understanding and learning and appreciating other people's situations. Um, so, yeah, do drop a like and a comment if you have something constructive to say. 
I think this is a really interesting subject and it's a major thing in our economy right now. And in other economies, this isn't just a British thing. This is very much a worldwide thing, a developed worldwide thing. A lot of European countries and uh, like America and Canada, they have all the similar problems and went through the same experiences as us over the last four years and have the same issues with the healthcare systems and the flexibility of work for people who do caring jobs or are ill and can't do a full-time nine to five and maybe want to work from home rather than having to go back to the office. This is a, a big subject all over the world. So, you know, you can't move countries and find it's not there because it is. So enjoy and as usual, do all the likes and the subscribe things and all that sort of thing. Um, and great. Thank you very much for watching.